Funding for FAIR 2022 is brought to you by Friends, the Iowa PBS Foundation, and by... For more than 110 years, EMC Insurance Companies has served policyholders, independent agents, and local communities, providing insurance products for both business and life. Count on EMC. I am Kevin Rasmussen, and I am a pig farmer. We feel a deep responsibility to protect our environment and ensure sustainability. I think it's important to share our story and that others know that we're always striving to do better. I'm Bill Riley, and welcome to FAIR 2022. The great Iowa State Fair, it's happening all around us as we bring you our 51st year of coverage here at Iowa PBS. Tonight kicks off a full week of State Fair highlights and everything from the livestock contest to the music to the food and the fun. Oh, did I mention the food? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of food out here. We're gonna bring you a full hour of the very best our State Fair has to offer. Coming up tonight, we'll find out how much kids know about farming on the Wheels of Agriculture game show. Our own Travis Craven, he's going to sample some of the fair's most intriguing new foods. And we'll get to meet the 2022 Iowa State Fair Queen. I just can't wait for you to see what we have in store for you tonight. So let's get started with the event that kicks off our coverage every year, just as it marks the beginning of every state fair. Yep, it's the Iowa State Fair Parade. Denny and Candy Elwell served as this year's parade marshals. What's it mean to be Grand Marshal of the parade? Well, I've been coming to, I've been coming to this uh, fair uh, for, since I was five years old. So uh, it, it's, I, I think it's a, a, a nice thing. I'd just say it's a nice thing. I've, I've been to many fair parades and, and uh, it's just nice to be recognized in this fashion. Are you excited about being in the front of the line? Yes, I am and I'm so humbled to have this opportunity to represent our fair like we are doing and, and our parade is just awesome. Reigning Iowa State Fair Queen is McKenna Henrich of Plymouth County. All right, McKenna, you're coming to the end of your reign. What did you enjoy most this year? I definitely loved getting to meet people, you know, seeing people from all different walks of life and learning what they love about the fair has been amazing. You have the girls warming up to, to be your replacement, but what about the ones who are behind them? Talk to those young women who might be watching. Give them some inspiration about what they can do to maybe be in your spot someday. You know, I think it starts from when you're younger. You have to have a passion and a love for what you do, and if you don't, why do it? So I think starting young, remembering what, you know, dedicates you and what you love. So for me, it was starting out when I was in FFA as an eighth grader, and then here I am now, and I followed that passion through and kind of bringing me into something that can bring me farther in life.
A lot of fairgoers say one of the main reasons they come to the fair each year is for the food, and I'm no different. Each year, dozens of new foods debut here at the fair, and 2022 is no different. So let's get started by sampling something I'm sure everyone is looking forward to, the deep fried spam curds. All right, so what exactly goes into a Spam curd? Those curds are traditional flavored Spam. We bread them, batter them, deep fry them. That's it. All right, easy enough. That's right, enjoy. Dip it in the mayo and ketchup. That's pretty good, not over the top, but a nice Spam treat. And fried is the best way to have it. All right, on to the next. Normally, I'm not a big fan of sweet things with meat, but I do love bacon. I like apples, and I like waffles, so let's try the apple bacon waffles. Describe for me what the apple bacon waffle is. All right, it is a waffle batter with apples and bacon bits inside, and then it is topped with the apple pie filling, uh, bacon bits, and syrup. All right, a moment of truth, thank you. Got to get a little bit of all of this goodness. This is not going to be graceful. Mmm. That is a bomb of flavor. It really all works together, I'm surprised. I'm sorry. I'm talking with my mouth full, but... This is pretty good. All right, Mom. I'm cleaning my plate. Let's let the culinary marathon continue. So coleslaw is a staple of pretty much any picnic in Iowa, but let's kick it up a few notches and see how they do it in the islands. It's our island coleslaw with mandarin oranges, crushed pineapple. It's a mayo base topped off with teriyaki chicken and garnished with macadamia nuts and a sriracha glaze. It's really, really good. I'm a big fan of coleslaw. I like teriyaki chicken. I like all of these ingredients, but never would have thought to put them all together. It works. I feel like this is enough health food. Let's move on to the next one. All right, it seems the very definition of state fair food is a corn dog, but I'm not a big fan of hot dogs, so maybe I should try rattlesnake. Hello, I'm gonna be adventurous and try the rattlesnake corn dog. Would you like the venom sauce on it? It's an avocado salsa with a really cool name. That sounds pretty good to me. All right, the moment of truth. It's rattlesnake sausage, so it has a little bit of spice seasoning to it, and that sauce, the venom sauce. It's got a little bit of a kick. It's really pretty good. It's kind of the state fair corn dog that I can get behind. Oh, I'll tell you, mm, it looks really good. I absolutely love rattlesnake. Mm. Oh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> So good you had to go in for a second. This is my second one. Mm hmm. Uh, I am almost stuffed, but I have saved a little bit of room for dessert, and I think I see funnel cakes up the way. Hello, can I try Nana's gooey butter funnel cake? All right. This starts with funnel cake, which you can't go wrong with, and then it has cream cheese frosting and cookie butter drizzled over the top of it. That's ooey gooey goodness. Mm. That is a dessert to finish everything off. Actually through the Iowa State Fair, I've had llamas in it I think four years. One of my jobs the year of 2017 was to help unload and install llamas. And when my parents came to pick me up from it, I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, you need to come see these. We need to have these. So later that year, I sold my steer and I bought three llamas. So today we have 
have a llama show going on, so you have a bunch of people from a bunch of different states, like you have Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Missouri, Nebraska. And you have a bunch of youth, you have adults, you have just a whole variation of people. And everyone just loves it here, so everyone just kind of like gets along very well. And it's just super fun to be around here. Okay, walk through. First obstacle, bringing your llama in here, I want you to pick up and check the right front foot. This is a pack course, and the things that are in, the obstacles that are in this course are what simulates what you would do if you took your llama out onto a trail into the wilderness packing. So there's multiple different types of packs. This is just like a training pack. It's pretty simple and it's a lot cheaper. Um, so there's like two pockets. There's a bigger one and then a smaller one. You can just fit random stuff in there. So there's those three different classes. There's the pack class, which is what we've been doing. And then they have obstacle and PR. Finding the right llama is part of the thing because not all llamas are the same for every job. So you have llamas that are good guards, so they take care of the flock of sheep. Some llamas are good at PR, some animals are good at, you know, stuff like this, and then some llamas just plain don't want to do any of it. It's a lot. There's a lot of patience that goes into it. It's really fun just to watch other animals progress. Like your friend's llamas, you'll see them go from being some of the most stubborn animals here to just going and winning first places. And it's very fun. It's really cool to watch. I think it's a it's something that keeps the kids, for me personally, my kids, it gives them an outlet to do things, to work with them to show how responsible they can be to keep them out of trouble when they're growing up. Well, that's a cute llama tent. Where did we get that? Well, the biggest events for us exhibitors is to come in and show our animals uh, for showmanship and performance. We're a pretty big uh, community, uh, or we consider ourselves a llama family. A lot of us with llamas got started in 4-H doing a little county fair. From there, there might have been a breeder, you know, helping the youth at the county fairs and then wanting them to go to regional shows. So then the kids start going to regional shows and then they start getting to know the kids from all these other counties. I like their personalities. It's like when, I'm, when I've had a bad day at school or something, I just have to come home and they'll always greet me at the fence. Uh, this is Adonis, by the way. I love just watching them from my kitchen window. They're just really intriguing and unique animals. And the way that they learn just really, I don't know, I've just really, kept, they've captivated my heart. I would invite you to come see the llamas. We're there the last weekend of the state fair. Come by, come talk to us. We all like to talk to the public about our llamas. If you want to pet one, um, there's always somebody that will let you pet one of the llamas. And I just love it so much. I love the people that I show with. And I most importantly love my llama. This year we're going to have a lot of fun with some state fair trivia. So tonight's question is in the form of a picture. Take a look at the photo and see if you can figure out where at the fair you might see this. Is it in the 4-H building, the Jacobson Exhibition Center, the Youth Inn, or maybe the Cattle Barn? <laughs> We're gonna bring you the answer a little later in the show. And speaking of trivia, Abby Brown found some quick-witted young people testing their knowledge at the wheels of agriculture. Welcome to the game of trivia, where you've gotta be fast, you've gotta be knowledgeable, and it really helps if you bring your family. Does anybody know what agriculture means? No. no. Oh, what animals live on a farm? Cow. Ooh, what animal lives on a farm? Pig. 
All right, ladies, you have a unique advantage today on the trivia component because you're involved in a very specific group. 4-H. Do you feel like you can win? Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Five point spin. If you can think of three things that you might see inside of a barn, hit your big red button and tell me. Team number one chimed in first. Give me three things you might find in a barn. Hey. Yep. Um, a pig. A pig, that's right, uh-huh. And a horse. And a horse, of course. Very good. Five points, team one. Go give it a spin. All right, Tim, tell me about Wheels of Agriculture. Well, Wheels of Agriculture is just a bundle of fun, and it's for all ages. Uh, I really wanted this to be a family show uh, so that anyone of any age can participate in it. All right, team three, what do you think that is? A chainsaw. A chainsaw is correct. Good job, 10 points, team three. Next wheel spinner, give it a spin. So the questions, you never know what kind of questions we're gonna ask and how many points it's gonna be worth. Can anyone tell me what do the four H's stand for? And then if they get it right, the points go on their score. If they get it wrong, we take it out to the audience. Head, heart, hands. Head, heart, hands, and help. help. Boom, there you go. And what practice would you like? Flying chicken, poop and pig, or cowbell or squirting cow? Let's see if you know what this one is. Team number one, what is Old that? McDonald's Old had McDonald had a farm, of course he did. Team number one. Dairy. Dairy is correct, very good, 10 points. Team number one, got it right away. What sound, what tool is that being used? A hammer. A hammer, you nailed it, very good. This is my first time at the Iowa State Fair and I am thrilled to be here. Well, welcome, and you have special interest in the Iowa State Fair this year, correct? Yes, my son just graduated from the University of Iowa and he helped me uh, write some of the, write and research some of the questions that we're gonna be presenting today. So uh, we're putting his creative writing degree to use. <laughs> By the way, have you folks heard the rumor about butter? No, well, I'm not gonna spread it then. But... No, I did not grow up in Iowa. But you now have a forever link to Iowa, right? Yes, yes I do. Just graduated University of Iowa. Absolutely loved it there. So grateful to be in Iowa again. One pound of butter, how many pounds of milk does it take? Here's your choices. Five, 11, or 21 pounds. Team number two chimed in really early. What do you think? Five, 11, or 21 pounds? 21. Boom, you got it. Very good. Young about 2016, 17, I really identified the need for people to be more aware about agriculture. Because I, I, you know, a lot of the people that come to these fairs don't know a lot about agriculture. So we decided to put a show together that would involve agricultural awareness. The louder you clap, the more egg bucks she's going to grab out of the air. Keep her pumped up, folks. We are here to make people laugh as well as become aware of the agriculture that's around them and uh, appreciate the farmers that uh, grow all of our food. Thanks so much. We hope you enjoyed the Wheels of Agriculture game show. Come back and see us again sometime. On behalf of Doug and myself, God bless everybody. Way to go, give me a high five. A great number of buildings and structures have come and gone at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. Like the exhibition building, a stately white marvel that sat atop what we now call Expo Hill. The wooden roller coaster, which was a permanent attraction up until just after World War II. But one attraction has stood the test of time and has remained a staple for thousands of fairgoers for over 100 years, Ye Old Mill. There's somewhere around 50,000 people that ride through this here. Uh, at the fair. The kids come ride it, the adults, the people that met here 40 years ago that this was their first date that they went on. The Old Mill is the fair's oldest amusement ride, dating from 1921. If you've never ridden the Old Mill, it entails unaccompanied boats floating on waterways. The water is propelled by a large paddle wheel, and the boats meander through a dark tunnel, gently knocking against the sides and sometimes even against other boats. Generation after generation have enjoyed the amusement. For some, it's as much of a tradition as the big slide or corn dogs. Well, memories, memories, the old mill. I don't think there's an Iowan who has not been here at the fair and taken a trip on the old mill. It's beautiful and it's romantic. Like Pioneer Hall or Grandfather's Barn, 
the mill has stood the test of time. But in the mid-1990s, the fate of this century-old amusement ride was up in the air. The day the old mill fell down, um, ironically, was the day that we were planning to fix it. In 1996, the mill had been scheduled for refurbishment. But earlier in the spring, the wind got a hold of the attraction before the fair workers did. It was a very, very windy day. It was blowing about 40 mile an hour from the south. And what happened, unfortunately, was the wind got from the south and blew up underneath the roof area and lifted the building up slightly. And when it lifted it up, it lifted it up off the posts, and uh, then it caught the back wall and just literally pushed the building over and collapsed it. And we all jerked our head around, and down she went. All was not lost. After a short period to clean up the debris, plans were made to replicate the structure first introduced to fairgoers in 1921. The wheelhouse and canal were completely reconstructed to the exact specifications of the original. The boats were replaced to provide a smoother ride. The bright red paddle wheel still remains and is the only vestige of the original mill. While the ride has seen its fair share of changes over the last 100 years, its essence remains the same. It's an amusement. It's a tradition. It's a staple of the Iowa State Fair. Why does everybody ride this? They ride it every year, because it really doesn't change. It's tradition. They go to the same food stand they ate before. They go through the agriculture building. They go have a pork chop on a stick. They ride the old mill, you know, and it's just a tra traditional fair. Heaven knows I love to eat my way across the state fair, and it is always fun to try the new things. But you have to give credit to the classics, like the corn dog, funnel cake, and of course, state fair lemonade. I'm here with Diane Perry, and Diane, this is a real, true family business with a whole lot of legacy to it. Yes, it does, yep. So it started in 1948. Tell Correct. me a little bit about Correct. it. Uh, my grandmother started it in 1948. She passed it on to my mom. And we just lost my mom in December. Oh, I'm so sorry. And so now it's mine, and then it will be my son's, and then my grandson's. Why isn't it called Mom's Old Fashioned Lemonade? Well, you know, it's always been Dad's. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea about that one. And I am here with Alyssa, who is going to teach me how to make great state fair lemonade. And we're just going to do a half a lemon and a okay. quarter of an orange. And all you're going to do is just grab a scoop of sugar. And then we're going to take it over here. And so we just crush it until it's, for the most part, pretty liquidy, and all the sugar is combined with the fruit. And fill it all the way up with ice. Any words of wisdom for me to not leak all over the place? Um, I think that looks like a seal. Just try to keep them tight, yeah. Okay. Be confident. Yes. Be confident. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Give me lemonade. All right. Taste <laughs> it. You know, we're not out here to make money, and I think there's a lot of us out here that are not. Apparently, I make a mean lemonade. <laughs> If you're not out here to make money, what are you here for? Um, the nostalgia, I think. You know, there's so many families that struggle. We just want to make it the same as it was last year so they can enjoy a little bit of the fair. Diane, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. When you visit the fair, do you enter any of the contests? There are so many choices. Here are some of the top winners.
Well, it's time for us to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll have entertainment that's just your size. You can immerse yourself in the tiny world of dollhouses and miniatures. And then marvel at the astonishing girth of this year's really big animals. We'll also meet the 2022 Iowa State Fair Queen. So don't go far. We'll be right back with all that and much more from the great Iowa State Fair right here on Iowa PBS. There was some amazing talent at the Riley stage today. Here are the young Iowans advancing from today's competition. We'll bring you the talent championships here at Iowa PBS Sunday, August 21st at 8 p.m. Welcome back everyone to our first night of Fair 2022. Are you fascinated by people who can do several things at once? The person we're about to meet can play piano, sing, and cruise around the fair all at the same time. Let's check it out. My name is Jim Ripp. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. Um, and through dueling pianos and the whole circuit there, I hooked up with strolling pianos a couple years ago and been doing it ever since. Why do you feel me? absolutely love it. As soon as I start or pull out, they the, the phones are out. Everybody's big smile on their face and grabbing their friends, having everybody look. I just love it. I get more entertainment out of it probably than they do. A brown eyed girl. So I am a technician with the strolling piano. Um, I supervise while we're out here on site and when we're back home in Florida, I help build and maintain our multiple units that we have now. Without giving away too much, obviously, um, it's a lot of electronic components. Obviously, you can see a microphone, speakers, keyboard. Um, so yeah, so that's the big thing. We have a TV on the front so that if we need to do bulletins or some sponsorship, we can do stuff like that too. And, and then she lights up really pretty at night. It's a lot of getting the crowd to interact with you. Definitely get some, some requests. Uh, I ask them to sing along whenever they can, take over the lyrics. Million dollar question I keep getting, how does it steer? <laughs> that's something, that's kind of the secret sauce that makes it magical to everybody. And that's the question literally everybody wants to know. But it's like any secret sauce. We keep it to ourselves. So we're here at the fair every single day from start to finish. We are currently starting at about 4 o'clock and we end at around 8, 8.30. Um, so you can feel free to come on down any evening and check us out. 
Iowa State Fair. We've never been here. Strolling Pianos has never been here. Love it, absolutely love it so far. You know, I've, I've done several state fairs. This is beautiful here. Just, it's fun. Everybody's in a good mood, smiles everywhere. Great people, beautiful place. These submissions may be tiny, but this contest is always huge. So why are you competing today in this contest? Well, we've been doing this for a little while. We have, um, my sister's mother-in-law started us with dollhouses and I got hooked from the very beginning. And I just love it, and this has been my in my head for probably four or five years. Well, my dollhouse is based on all my favorite scary movies and books and just anything that has to do with something scary. So this is a Lego model of Frank Lloyd Wright's hotel in Mason City, Iowa, called Historic Park Inn. It's the last remaining hotel that he's designed in the world. So why choose such an iconic Iowa landmark? I have a, a really big love for Iowa, my state that I'm from. I just love it here, and I think it's amazing that we have so many amazing things here within our own state. And we aren't just a flyover state. We have so much to offer to the rest of the world and to the rest of the country. I'm not sure. A lot of it is just childhood memories. You know, we have people who build the farmhouse they grew up in. We have people who, you know, build the house that they wish they owned. You have, you know, people who just do different. A dollhouse can mean a lot of things for a lot of people. I like to pretend like a family lives there and I have things in the dollhouse that, you know, would be in their home and I like to picture what kind of people they would be, I guess. That's the fun part, is finding just junk around your house that you can transform, and people don't know that until you point it out. It's really satisfying. I mean, I like coming down and just seeing people as they're putting their things up. I love it. I like just seeing it, what everybody else is doing and all of the different creative ways and ideas that people come up with for how to decorate houses. Yeah, this one's supposed to be broken, so. Our teacher for 33 years did this big painting and, and she made a little miniature of it. So that's one of my favorite parts of the whole thing. <laughs> My favorite part is seeing the creativity from everyone else and the different mediums and the, the different designs that people use. There's Halloween, there's real life, there's so many great things to see from all different types of miniatures. Detailed and realistic, and possibly small designs. These craftspeople are not just making miniatures, but they're making entire worlds. This is the Iowa State Fair Big Ram Contest. We have six entries this year. We'll bring them out uh, one at a time, take them over and weigh them, bring them back and stand them up here, and then announce our winners. Uh, first, we need Ben Hecker with his Corridale. Two hundred and eighty-two pounds. All right. Next up, we need Tees and Columbia's with their Columbia Ram. 218 pounds. All right, I need uh, Mona Baker and her Suffolk, please. Mona Baker's four-year-old Suffolk Ram weighed 413 pounds. Now we need Jason Silo's Ram Belay. Jason Silo's four-year-old Ram Belay Ram weighed 295 pounds. Next up, we have Abby Wilson. 
Abby's ram weighs 428 pounds. Abby's from Shell Rock, Iowa. And our last ram is a Suffolk ram from Fisher Farms out of Meeker, Mercer, Missouri. All right, Fisher Farms, six-year-old Suffolk ram, 456 and a half pounds. Our champion biggest ram this year at the Iowa State Fair 2022 will be Fisher Farms six-year-old ram at 456 pounds. He's tall, he's got a lot of frame to him. Uh, he's an older ram, which helps him to weigh more. Uh, he's a good ram. If you're really serious about winning this contest, you about have to keep a ram around just for the contest and not let him do a lot of breeding because when a ram is breeding, he's chasing ewes and he's not eating a lot and he'll lose quite a bit of weight. They may lose 50 pounds of weight. A little bit at a time. It's just like anything, you say too much if something's not always good. So you gotta take a time and go easy with them, and start them on feed, maintain their feed, have the right ration, keep them comfortable. A lot of things will still go wrong. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to welcome you to the 2022 world's biggest boar contest here at the Iowa State Fair. This boar's name is Purdy Boy. He's named after Iowa State quarterback Brock Purdy, who wanted to be here today but couldn't miss practice with the San Francisco 49ers. He's a Chester White Land Race Cross, six years old, and he's never been shown before. 1,156 pounds. Our next entry is Pee Wee. This boar is a Hereford boar, exhibited by Marv Rettman, Orange Sandbutt from Sioux Center. For the last two years, these gentlemen have exhibited the reserve champion boar. If he doesn't like what they're feeding him, he gets upset and dumps his feed pen. Come on, 13. 1,300 pounds, 1,300 pounds. That is 35 pounds short of a record, Marv. I really think it got down to feed cost. Feed is extremely high right now. Uh, these boars will eat 25 to 30 pounds of feed a day. So you start doing that all summer long or even for 100 days, that's quite a bit of money. He like milk and donuts. Long John's cream filler are his favorites. And what we, uh, I've got a friend with a dairy He's got uh, hospital milk, and so we gave him Jersey. He likes Jersey because it's high butter fat. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm John Putney, and welcome to the 2022 Super Bowl contest. Here comes Big John. Big John weighs 2,488 pounds. He's a three-year-old Charlet bull. He was born and raised on their farm in New Virginia. His name is Mean Gene. Mean Gene weighs 2,728 pounds. And the bull's name is Albert. Albert was born at Dreher Angus Farm in the spring of 2017. Albert from Audubon weighs 3,042 pounds. And now the answer to our trivia question. Where at the fair would you see this window? Is it in the 4-H building, the Jacobson Exhibition Center, the Youth Inn, or the Cattle Barn? The answer is the Youth Inn. Completed in 1942, the Omen Family Youth Inn is the home to hundreds of young exhibitors during the fair every year. And those exhibitors bring thousands of projects to the fair. So let's head on over to the Youth Inn and check out the 4-H Clothing and Style Show. Ellie Carlson, Marshall County Senior Clothing Selection. Madison Craig, Johnson County, $15 challenge. I'm 
Bonnie Gallagher and I work at the campus office of the Iowa 4-H Youth Development Program. And this event is the A Wardrobe Clothing Event, which is our showcase opportunity for young people in the clothing project area. We have three categories or classes that youth can participate in. One is called clothing selection, which means they set a goal for their outfit and then they'll put that outfit together. And the judge is going to be looking for things like how did they achieve their goal by using things like design elements and their knowledge about fabric and care of their clothing. We also have a $15 challenge, which is a reuse type of a class. So they get to go out and look for secondhand clothing that totals less than $15 for their entire outfit. And then we have another class called Fashion Review. And this is where young people who are really interested in sewing and designing clothing actually make their own garment um, and show that to the judges. This is the clothing selection category, and so it's my new outfit that I purchased. And I'm wearing these loose blue flowy pants that I fell in love with, and then I tied it in with a white shirt, the scarf, and the hat. This is my eighth year for my county, and then my third year here. I really love doing it because I like the one-on-one -on -one judging with the judge, and I love fashion, so it's really fun to do, and I really like sewing, too. So. We have about 160 youth participants this year from all over the state of Iowa. I, a wardrobe clothing event has been with the Iowa State um, 4-H Youth Development Program for a long time, for many years, and we actually um, used to have it in other locations in Des Moines and, and at the um, Iowa State University campus, and this is our fifth year back at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. I'm in uh, Fashion Review, and this is actually my first year participating. My club leader was like, no guys do it. I mean, they'll have a lot of fun. You know, it's just you get a walk and get this outfit. And sure enough, I did. This year, it's been great. Uh, the Polk County Fair was fun. I had all these, these poses planned out. And here was a lot of fun meeting everyone from all different places. I definitely think I'm going to do this again. We're talking about like a partnership outfit. That'd be fun. Justine Weir, Polk County. I think that the thing that's really fun about this program is that really anyone can be a part of this. So whether they're just starting out in the clothing project area or if they're really involved and they would like to go into design and they see themselves in a career, this is really an opportunity for everyone to participate and have a great learning positive experience. My name is David. My name's Tobin. And together we form the Red Trouser Show, which is an acrobatic, fire juggling, and comedy show. Starting at the beginning, we have some kind of simple acrobatic warm up tricks to get our bodies limbered up, and a couple of fun, like balancing things. Tobin will often balance something just pulled straight out of the audience. After that, we go into our fire juggling routine. Uh, which is one of the main routines in our show. But don't watch me. Watch David's face. <laughs> and then we grab a volunteer out of the audience, and they help us with uh, the sort of final routine in our show. We need a brave kid who is standing up, raising oh, their hand. My favorite there. part of the show to do is anything involving the audience and interacting with the people because that's the part that really changes day to day because you, you have a fresh audience every day and just having those little moments. In our show, mainly the main audience volunteer is a kid. Yes, buddy, run on up here. Give me a high five. And they oftentimes become the best part of the show. Whatever happens, Logan, do not lean forward like this or backwards like this. The funny thing about this trick is we used to do this with the torches on fire. <laughs> There's a bunch of people just showing up out here who have no idea that Logan is about to do something amazing. I, I had a lot of fun up there. Come on, Iowa, let's make Logan feel good. One, two, three!
Yeah, I mean, using a volunteer, it always has that element of, of risk, but it also can have such a great reward. It can add so much to the show, having that energy coming from the audience. Now, all of you holding us up, thank you. <laughs> and then our most dangerous stunt is our finale, where we're doing the human flag handstand 20 feet up in the air on top of our ladder. Two hands, hold on tight, I'm going to the top. Which one did you like the best that they did? The handstand on the ladder. We were just asking ourselves how long we've been coming to the Iowa State Fair. And trying to remember, I believe our first year here was 2012. I mean, I can honestly say that our experience at the Iowa State Fair, out of all the fairs we do, this is right at the top of the list. There aren't any fairs that we've been to that we enjoy performing at more. We have this great area here up on Expo Hill. The format is a little bit out of the way. I loved it so much that I really recommend everybody come out here to the State Fair and come watch this show. All their act is fantastic. My favorite one has to be the final act, where they stand on top of the ladder and do the handstand. The main thing is we want as many people to come up to Expo Hill and uh, watch the Red Trouser Show. That's right, we're here the full run of the fair, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 6 p.m. every day of the fair. So yeah, come have fun with us. If you think this was funny, you should have seen us run the Des Moines Marathon. <laughs> Hi, Bill Riley at the 2022 coronation of the Iowa State Fair Queen, but I'm honored to be with the reigning queen, McKenna Henrich from Plymouth County. McKenna, tell us what your year has been. Honestly, it's been a whirlwind. To think back on this year, you know, I can sum it up in one word, and that's grateful. It's been an opportunity of a lifetime, and I'm so blessed to be here. And you know what? One girl out there is going to be feeling it all tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have 98 county queens representing their county yes. fairs. Give us a rough idea of what those young ladies might be experiencing right now. Right, so when you're going through this process, it's a lot of nerves and it's a lot of anxiety. But, you know, guiding them through this process is the fact that they know who they are. They're here representing their county fair because they know they were chosen to be the right queen. So coming here, you know, they got to remember, that's why they're here. They were chosen to be here. And walking into this ceremony, it's out of control. So sit back and have fun. All right, your 2022 Iowa State Fair Queen is from Mitchell County, Marianne Fox.
We'll talk with Marianne and get to know her in Thursday night's show. Congratulations to Marianne Fox, our 2022 Iowa State Fair Queen. If you can't make it to the fair this year, here's your chance to soak up the atmosphere in a segment we call as if you were there at the fair. Well, we've come to the end of our first hour of fair highlights, but there's so much more to come. We're gonna be on the fairgrounds all week, gathering up the fair stories that you've come to expect and some new surprises too. Many of you have made our fair highlight program part of your viewing tradition, and we wanna make sure that you have all of our state fair coverage at your fingertips. So we want you to check out our website as well as the YouTube channel our Facebook and Instagram pages to get your daily dose of State Fair fun. There are so many ways you can engage with us about our beloved State Fair, anytime and anywhere. Now tomorrow night, we'll have the UTV and ATV racing at the Elwell Family Park. A more relaxing time with some wine down in the garden and the great Iowan recipe contest. Thanks for being here, everyone. I'm absolutely thrilled to be a part of this long-standing tradition. Be sure to join us tomorrow night for even more highlights from the incredible Iowa State Fair. Until then, I'm Bill Riley, and remember, have fun at the fair. Funding for FAIR 2022 is brought to you by Friends, the Iowa PBS Foundation, and by... For more than 110 years, EMC Insurance Companies has served policyholders, independent agents, and local communities, providing insurance products for both business and life. Count on EMC. Caring for pigs is not just a individual job. It truly does take a village to put a safe, healthy food on your table and keep farming sustainable. 